I'd like to introduce a family of a member of the family of the IAM, Cornell Dunmore, to give us the blessing, please. Can everyone just bow for prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we come before your presence today. We know that you are in ours. You say we're two or three gathered in your name. There you would be in the midst, and we welcome you into our presence. Fathers, we have come today to memorialize those who have lost their lives um, on the job and who have gone on to be with you. We ask you to be with us, God, and with the family members of those who have lost their loved ones. We ask you to give us strength today. We ask you to give us peace of mind today. And you, we ask that you give us resolution within ourselves. As we reflect on their lives and what the union have meant to them and they to the union. Bless the remainder of this service that we all may hear a word from you and be comforted in knowing that our loved ones love their families as we love them. And even though they are now with you and in your presence, God, that we can be okay with that. So this we ask in the name of your holy child, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's a short reflective song coming up. I'd like to introduce our uh, preliminary speaker, which would be Sister Dora Cervantes, General Secretary Treasurer of the IAM. Sister Cervantes became the IAM's 12th General Secretary Treasurer on August 1st, 2015, the first woman to direct the IAM finances as Secretary Treasurer. She has served many positions with the IAM, organizer, Grand Lodge representative, General Vice President, and it's my pleasure to introduce Sister Dora Cervantes to give our opening remarks. Good morning. I bring you greetings from our international president who couldn't be here with us today. We gather today together to recognize and remember 25 of our, 25 of our brothers and sisters, 25 of our fellow machinists who like each and every one of us went to work every day to earn a living, to put, put food on our table, and to contribute to our economy and society. 25 human beings who one day tragically did not return home to their loved ones or through a work-related illness passed, leaving their loved ones. Today, we recognize them and we remember them. But perhaps the greatest honor we can bestow upon these men and women, the greatest tribute to their memory, is to double our efforts to fight for safer workplaces, to help ensure that not one more machinist is killed or injured due to preventable circumstances. Not one more family should suffer as the families of these brothers and sisters have suffered. And we, the IAM, commit to doing that today and every day. Sorry about that. The labor movement has always been at the forefront to fight to protect workers' safety and health. On April the 28th, 1970, the United States Congress passed the Occupational Safety and Health Act, also known as OSHA. And it was labor who then dedicated the day of April the 28th at the, as the Workers' Memorial Day to ensure that no worker dies in vain. In 1985, Canada joined the U.S. to declare April the 28th as a day to remember and to honor those who have died on the job. 
In 2001, the IAM dedicated this place here at the Whippensinger Educational Center to recognize and remember the brothers and sisters who have suffered the unthinkable for their job. Each year, we gather to remember those who we have lost in the prior year. But make no mistake, our efforts to honor these dedicated work workers does not end when we lay the brick with their name on it. Every single day, IAM representatives work to get the best workplace protections we can for our members. Every single day, IAM representatives fight to be sure our workplaces are as safe as, as possible. And every single day, IAM representatives honor the sacrifices these brothers and sisters made by working to ensure that no more members die from unsafe working conditions. In 1970, Congress enacted the o OSHA, promising workers in this country the right to a safe job. More than 579,000 workers can now say their lives have been saved since the passage of OSHA. Since that time, workplace safety and health conditions have improved but too many workers remain at serious risk of injury, illness, or death as chemical plant explosions, major fires, construction collapses, and other preventable workplace tragedies continue to occur. Workplace violence is a growing threat. Many other workplace uh, hazards kill and disable thousands of workers each year. In 2016, 5,190 workers lost their lives on the job as a result of traumatic injuries. Each day in this country, an average of 14 workers die because of job injuries. Women and men who go to work never to return home to their families and loved ones. This does not include those workers who die from occupational diseases estimated to be anywhere from 50 to 60,000 each year. Chronic occupational diseases receive less attention because most are not detected for years after workers are exposed to toxic chemicals. And occupational illnesses are often mis misdiagnosed and poorly tracked. All total, an average of at least 150 workers die each day to, due to job injuries and illnesses. The cost of these injuries and illnesses is enormous estimated at 250 billion to 360 billion a year. During the eight years in office, the Obama administration had a strong track record on worker safety and health. The Obama administration increased the job safety budget, stepped up enforcement and strengthened workers' rights. At the end of the eight years, the Obama administration had put in place important protections, policies and programs that made jobs safer reduced injuries and illness, and saved workers' lives. With the election of President Trump and the Republicans maintaining their ma the majority in Congress, more than a dozen bills have overturned regulations issued by the Obama administration. The Trump administration has moved to weaken and re recently issued and has delayed, re recently issued rules and has delayed or abandoned the development of new protections including regulations on workplace violence, infectious disease, and other hazards. President Trump's budget in both 2018 and fiscal year for 2019 targeted key worker safety and health programs, proposing to cut funding and to eliminate OSHA's worker safety and health training programs. These are challenging times for working people and their unions, and the future prospects for safety and health protections are uncertain. What is clear, however, is that the toll of workplace injuries, disease, and death remains too high. Workers need more safety and health protections, not less. More than four decades after the passage of the OSHA, there is more work than ever to be done. Every single death is one too many, and these alarming statistics show us that we have our work cut out for us. Much still needs to be done to protect American and Canadian workers. The IAM will fight back against the Trump administration's efforts to make workplace less safe. The safety and health provisions machinists have in our contracts have already made jobs safer and resulted in many injuries being prevented and many lives being saved. 
The Department of Labor reports that more than half a million lives have been saved since the passage of OSHA. But our work is not done. As long as any machinist's life is still at risk, we still have work to do. The fighting machinists will be there to fight for the safest, wor safest workplace. That is what we must do to properly, properly honor the memories of these 25 brothers and sisters. While we remember and honor our 25 brothers and sisters, I would like to take a personal point of privilege to share a story of remembrance. One of our fallen sisters, Renee Cicero, was a very dear friend of mine, came a uh, uh, 30 plus year member of the machinist. She paved the way for many of us women to come. I am here because of her. And I just wanna say that she's greatly missed and I'm thankful that she paved the way for many of us women trade unionists to come. Another individual that I never had the pleasure of meeting is Diane Blondin, 51 plus year uh, member out of 751 in Seattle, another great trade unionist, also paving the way for us women to come. Although I didn't get to meet her, she did leave us her son, General Vice President Mark Blondin, my brother, my friend. If you would step up for a minute, please. This is presented to you on behalf of your mother. The Executive Council of the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers recognized Sister Diane Jeanette Blondin for her loyalty and service to her union. For over 50 years, Sister Blondin exemplified true value to fellow workers and the labor movement. She was a pioneering woman in the IAM and helped pave the way for future generations of women trade unionists and deserves the lasting respect and esteem of all our members of this association. Presented to the Blondin family under our hand and seal and on behalf of the Executive Council of the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers, this day, 30th day of April, 2018, International President Robert Martinez, General Secretary Treasurer Dora Cervantes. In closing, I would like to leave you with this poem. In this place, it's by uh, one of our retired members, Mike Baird. Look around this place. Remember each and every face. Think about why we're here and honor, and honor those we hold so dear. You stand here and bow your head Precious thoughts as the names are read. In our hearts, our loved ones live. Prayers and love are what we give. We come together on this day and share their memories in every way. I ask this of all of you here to please take care of yourselves, work safely, and enjoy life. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Cervantes. At this point, we will do a ringing of the bell and a reading of the names. I'd like to bring up uh, Terry McClendon and Arnett Powell will bring the bell. Thank you. Stephen Morales, Local Lodge 447. Sammy, Iron Man Sam, Barnett, Local Lodge 839. Frank Gatton, Local Lodge 4. Jeffrey Troy, Local Lodge 2789. Herman Webb. Local Lodge T6185. Harold C. Pender. Local Lodge T6633.
Martin Rivera Lira, Local Lodge 2600. Alan Bocini Jr., Local Lodge 175. Retired GLR for Transportation, Renee Cicero, District 142. Retired GLR for Transportation, Samuel Rodriguez, District 142. Retired DBR for Western Territory, Virginia Cobb, District Lodge 725. Retired Administrative Assistant for, of the Organizing at Headquarters, Gary Will, District Lodge W24. Mother of the General Vice Vice President from the Southern Territory, Mark Blondin, Diane Blondin, Local Lodge 751A. Retired Chief of Staff for GVP, Justin Ostro, Ellis Meacham, Local Lodge 63. Retired Grand Lodge Auditor for Canadian Territory, Lonnie Day. Retired GLR for the Canadian Territory, Remy Provical. Retired GLR for Eastern Territory, James Wilcox, District Lodge 97. Retired District 4 Area Director for Eastern Territory, Vicki Fultenberger. Retired rep, rep, Representative for International Trade and Globalization, Benjamin Sharman, District Lodge 65. Retired Grand Lodge Rep for the Midwest Territory, John Davis, Local Lodge 1553. Retired Grand Lodge Rep for the Midwest Territory, Anthony Hodges, District Lodge 90. Retired from the Southern Territory, Leonard Douglas, Local Lodge 681. Retiree from Southern Territory, James Mitcher, Local Lodge 776. Wife of George Hooper, the former GVP for the Southern Territory, Shirley Hooper. And retiree from the Eastern Territory, Wayne Campbell, LS89. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce General Vice President for the Southern Territory, Mark Blondin. He's been Southern Territory General Vice President since 2013. 13. Joined the Boeing Company in 1979. Joined the Executive Council in 2012. Active member of Local Lodge 751C in Seattle, Washington. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. And thank you, Dora. I never saw that award coming, and it'll certainly uh, warm the hearts of my brothers, and my, especially my father, uh, who is still mourning. We all are, and uh, appreciate it very much. In uh, 1970, the AFL-CIO declared Mem Workers' Memorial Day as a national day of recognition here in the United States to honor the hundreds of thousands of workers who are injured, fall ill, or are killed on the job due to workplace hazards. A workplace death isn't always immediate. Sometimes it takes years to happen. Injuries and illness from work, though, don't just hurt the worker. They hurt all of us, the family members. 
This day was declared by the AFL-CIO, the labor movement, us. OSHA, the Occupational Self and Safety and Health Administration, was formed a, a year later with a big push from organized labor, union labor. We made it happen. Even today, as Sister Cervantes said, more than a dozen workers are killed every day on the job. Hundreds of thousands continue to suffer from workplace injuries and illnesses. Events such as ours held today are now being held worldwide and have been since 1989. Yes, this day is now an international day of remembrance to honor and acknowledge workers killed in the workplace and injured in the workplace around the world. In 18, or 1989, the same year that unions throughout the United States and the world recognized this day of remembrance, we, the IAM, negotiated line, landmark contract language up in Seattle, Washington, between the IAM and the Boeing Company. This was due to multiple, and I mean hundreds of complaints and dozens of workers coming forward to talk about an unsafe workplace. My own mother was one of those workers that stepped up and complained. I had 11 years with the IAM at the time. She had many more. But uh, back before this historic, I'll get into this, the other part in just a moment, but this historic language created the IAM Boeing Health and Safety Institute, which uh, Sister McClendon is well aware of. Uh, she was my sister in Portland, Oregon at the time. We were under a master contract. This empowered workers safety committees, made real safety committees that could get the same kind of training the people in the safety office had, the industrial hygienists and the like. In fact, one of my good friends who was on the safety committee with me went on to become an inspector for state OSHA. That's how well trained some of our committee members were. But back before this historic language, there were no gloves offered for factory workers to protect their hands from resins, acetones, ketones, and countless other harmful chemicals in the aerospace industry. You heard me right. It was only latex gloves that were offered. Acetone or ketone will go through a latex glove in a minute or so. Then it goes through your skin. Then it gets in your bloodstream. Then it targets your internal organs. Back in the day, I remember clearly going to the wash station for lunch or after work, and there was always a squirt bottle of ketone and a Scotch-Brite pad next to the soap dispenser. And that's where the workers would, we would spray the ketone on the Scotch-Brite, scrub our hands to get rid of the sealant, the primer, the resin, or whatever else from your unprotected hands. You heard me right, it's true. We are, you were actually scrubbing the chemical into your skin. Nobody knew any better, that's the way it was. Downdraft tables were fairly uncommon during the time for workers like my mother who worked around fiberglass be it cutting fiberglass, sanding on it, drilling on it. Herring protection was not required in many areas that worked back then. Workers for generations became ill due to countless unsafe practices, procedures at companies. Carcinogenic paints, chromates were widespread used and unrespirated. Machinery was not properly guarded. I could go on and on, but this union took the lead in demanding testing, training, legislation, and, and protection for workers and damn compliance from companies. Adverse safety and health issues don't just affect the worker, but the family as well. Whether you take home the toxins in your clothing or you become disabled and dying, your family suffers as well. My mother never smoked. She didn't drink. She was a good girl. She didn't do anything wrong, but she suffered throughout her adult life from chronic bronchitis and COPD. We must continue to take the lead. We got to insist and be involved in workplace inspections, job safety analysis, training, and protection from the chemicals, falls, machinery, and all the workplace dangers that still exist and we still work around. Today we're here to honor those who have fallen and passed, good union, great family members. They loved us, they loved their union, but through, and they made personal sacrifice. Let's honor them today, let's pray for them, and let's all make a personal commitment 
It's a never-ending vigilance for workplace safety to take care of our brothers and sisters and their families. Thank you. Remember that safety is not just at work. Safety and health is throughout our entire lives. What we do at home, what we do at work, it's all relevant and we all need to work more closely with each other to help protect one another. I'd now like to introduce Cornell Dugmore again for our closing prayer. Let's, <clears throat> let us look to the Lord. Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to again to come and honor those who have fallen on the job. We thank you for every family member who is here uh, to memorialize their loved ones. We thank you for the staff who at the IM Safety and Health uh, Department that put this program together so we could take the time out to be still and recognize those who have labored so hard um, and given their lives to do so. And now we are grateful, Lord, for this opportunity uh, to be here. And we ask you to bless all who are under the sound of my voice, bring comfort to those who are still hurting, healing to those who need to be touched by you, and let us reflect back on those who have been lost, uh, that we may continue to honor them by making sure that the workplaces whereby many of our members at the IAM and throughout the world are going to work every day, God. You know where the unsafe areas are, and we're going to ask that you expose those and make those known, and so that they can become safe and lives can surely be saved. So we thank you again for this opportunity to be together. We pray that your blessings upon our travels as we leave this place to return to our homes. These are our prayers that we're asking you together as one. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. With that, I can commit to you that the Safety and Health Department will continue to fight for the living as we mourn for those who have passed on. I'd like to thank you all for coming and sharing this part of the day with us, and I now adjourn this ceremony. Thank you. <laughs>